So now we're going to talk about the internet, you know, that thing that we all get on every day of our lives and, you know, kind of just stare at for hours on end. But, okay, what does it mean to actually have the internet? There's a lot to it, and so let's take a look at some things. So, kind of, what is the internet? Well, truth be told, it looks like this. This is actually how the internet looks, uh, believe it or not. This is a nice little mapping uh, that you can take a look at. Um, but all that blue, that's actually America's, all those websites. You can see what are the most commonly used ones if you're inclined. Take a look at the link, and as you can see, it'll actually pull up. So you can actually dig through, see what are the most commonly used websites of the world. So for example, that big you know, little circle there, I want to take a guess. What do you think that one might be? Well, if you click on it, guess what? Google, of course. But as you can see, we can go through a few of these. Facebook, as you can tell, a lot of us are still saying, oh, I don't use Facebook. Secretly, we still use Facebook. Everybody uses it. We're all connected to it. But Yahoo.com is actually pretty popular. Uh, YouTube, obviously. Uh, where else are we watching these videos? Wikipedia, everyone's favorite. But you can see over here, we also have, say for example, the yellow. Well, guess what? That's actually China. So you can actually take a look at, say for example, Baidu.com, which is China's most popular website. And if you take a look at it, you click on that link, guess what? It looks a lot like Google. It's their search engine of choice. So take a look at a few of those and see what they all do and how they all work. And maybe you might have a little fun with them. But in reality, let's think about it in physic, uh, physical sense, it's all just a series of tubes. I know that's a little joke uh, going around the internet, but in reality it is. Because we have to think, how is the internet built? How is it that I can connect to another computer? Well, that's actually where, if we take a look at this for a second, this guy right here, this is known as an ethernet cable. This guy is pretty much what lets me go from my computer to the router uh, that Cape Fear Community College has. Uh, some of you are like, oh, but I use a wireless router. I have a wireless computer. Ah. You do this a lot with your, your pompousness. Again, you still eventually are going to connect via one of these guys. Your router probably has one of these connected to its modem, your cable modem. And then from there, even though you're not using a Cat5 outward, you're probably using another kind of cable. Cable is the big word there. You're going through some physical device because this, believe it or not, is faster. So those of you who are gamers, if you're on a wireless network, that's not a smart idea. You probably want to invest in a 30 foot long one of those. But as we expand outward, for example, uh, I'm currently in Castle Hain. But what happens if I want to visit any website in the world? Let's actually take a look at that for a second. I'm going to pull up a nice little program. This is called my command prompt. And I'm actually going to run something called tracers. Now, you don't need to worry too terribly much on this for, say, the test. But tracer, what tracer does is it actually shows me where in this series of tubes I'm actually going to connect, where I'm going to connect to. So if I say, for example, go to google.com. Well, as soon as I hit enter, what's actually going on is I'm now feeding through and I'm going to go through every single one of the connections that I need to go to for this. And we see there's a bunch of numbers that are going on there. Those are known as my IP address. And what does an IP address mean? Well, as this is going on in the background, the IP address is really the background. If we want to think about it, uh, Google.com. That's like your phone book on your phone. You know, I don't know my dad's phone number. I know that's terrible. I know my mom's, but I don't know my dad's. Well, I know that it has a number attached to it. That's the IP address. It's the phone number to it. For example, you can see over here as we continue to move forward, I've finally left Cape Fear Community College, and suddenly I'm in the Raleigh Triangle Park. I'm in RTP. All right, well, we're still connecting, and I know it's going really slowly, it, you know, getting to Google is a lot faster than this, but you can start to see all of the different, we like to call them hops, as this continues going on. You can see even Google.com has one, you know, it's 173.194.68.105. Something I want to point out with that is every one of those numbers is lower than 255. 255, that sounds familiar. That sounds like binary conversion. And as you can see, eventually, after about 
14 hops I got to Google and that's kind of crazy that now all of a sudden I've gone to Google what happens when that ha I do that is I go to Google Google has this thing uh, this computer known as a server a web server its sole job is to give me a website once I make a request to it via this tracer it grabs the file I want and it gives me back that file in ones and zeros that's the big important thing let's actually take a look at that let's say for example I pull up google.com and just bring it up for you guys for a second so here's Google alright well inside of Google it's not just you know I don't get the magic of just seeing the pictures and the bells and whistles I actually have to dig a little deeper at this and if I actually take a look at this this is really Google now what happens is I make a connection to the internet and just to take a look at this guy again that Ethernet cable what happens is Google spits out ones and zeros binary through this guy not this guy but a larger more powerful version of this and it continues to go through those same hops across the globe well across the US since it's in California across the US until I get enough of those ones and zeros all of those ones and zeros get translated into something known as ASCII ASCII is our way of translating binary data into all of the different possible characters and if you want take a look at this uh, image here this is actually what allows me to translate each one of those so each one has its own kind of connection for example uh, the binary representation of 65 if you kinda look at this table 65 that's the capital A if I continue to look where are you right there 60 60 is that kind of uh, well it would look like this uh, it's the left-handed carrot as I call it a carrot well if you notice that's if you zoom in really close or I zoom in for you you can see that's the first character of Google's website and we continue to go through that on and on and on you can see we even get a little description of Google but as we scroll through this a little bit you can see everything that makes up Google happens now why don't I see this well obviously this is uh, a bunch of craziness and I don't understand any of it what happens is our web browser takes that information and actually renders it renders a big fancy word renders it to make it look a specific kind of way